Welcome, everyone, um, and hope you're doing well today. We wanted to be the first to welcome you to our holiday webinar. My name is Carrie Sweeney, and I manage our big box retail partnerships here at Pinterest. I'm really excited to be here today talking about the holidays in July. It's never too early. Uh, before we dive in, I do want to acknowledge that it's certainly been an emotional spring filled with a lot of twists, turns, and tragedies. And there's certainly a sentiment that life has changed, possibly permanently. And yet we're also witnessing remarkable resiliency within our communities. A few weeks ago, non-essential stores across the country were completely empty and everyone was at home. Now we're starting to see some regions reopen. Here in Chicago, for example, people are cautiously venturing out and kind of figuring out what it means to strike a balance between safety and socialization. The off-sighted silver lining of the past few months is that we've learned to adapt and rethink topics both really big and small. And our ad industry has certainly demonstrated the same flexibility as campaigns that were planned months in advance suddenly became irrelevant, requiring shifts, pauses, and thoughtful new messaging. We've also been pivoting and adapting here at Pinterest, recognizing new pinner behavior and advising our clients on how to respond accordingly. As lockdown started, people began using Pinterest in really distinct ways. Usage skyrocketed as people sought comfort and they wanted to transform their immediate surroundings. They were searching for things like home office upgrades, memory foam seat cushions, Wi-Fi solutions, even how to make their own standing desks. But as time passed, searches really shifted from the idea of comfort and now to the idea of the future. People are starting to look forward to, well, looking forward. They uh, started looking at sandals for the summer, recipes for grilling in the backyard, and dreamy getaways for whenever travel resumes in full. And as early as April, they also started searching for ways to make the upcoming holidays as meaningful and memorable as possible. So let's pause for a minute and talk about the elephant in the room. We are well aware that when brands start talking about the holidays too early, they might be met with some really big eye rolls. We've all walked into stores in the past and cringed when we saw red and green and heard Christmas carols while wearing shorts. However, the dividing line between a jarring experience and a helpful one is really all about context. And on Pinterest, you're showing up in contextually relevant environments, in front of people who are actively looking for holiday ideas and really inviting you in. So you have the right to talk about the holidays whenever people are searching for them. And on Pinterest, that's really happening earlier than ever right now. Pinners are always planners, we like to say, but this year, they're really knocking it out of the park. So this is what we're going to be talking about for the next 30 minutes. I'll introduce you to Dave Coles, who will share a deep dive on how to best use Pinterest and how to activate our full funnel marketing products so that your brand can be first when people start looking. You'll also hear from Courtney Banty, our creative strategy lead, who will advise on the most inspiring and creative solutions for your campaign. So one logistical note before we start, we'll be taking your questions at the end of the presentation. So please feel free to type your questions in the box on the right side of your screen. Also, the slides will absolutely be available after the presentation. So when we're done, you'll just be asked to complete a quick survey and then you'll receive a PDF of the slides. And with that, we will get started. We'll get to the good stuff. I'm thrilled to introduce you to my colleague, Dave Coles. He is a senior partner manager on our retail accounts. And I'm gonna hand it over to you, Dave. Thanks, Carrie, and welcome again, everyone. Hi all, my name is Dave Coles, and I help manage several of our specialty retail partnerships at Pinterest. I'm really excited to talk to you today about this year's holiday shopping environment for three reasons. First, I'd love to share thoughts on the potential impact we think COVID is having on the customer journey that may influence holiday shopping behavior this year. Second, we're seeing some interesting trends in our holiday data earlier than we have in the past, and we wanna unpack that for you. And third, we have some new shopping features on Pinterest that weren't available for holiday last year that I wanna present. So let's dive in. Uh, first of all, I'm sure all of us can think of the ways that COVID has impacted our lives and in particular, some of our shopping behaviors. In my house, we've been gravitating away from physical stores and more towards e-commerce, delivery services, and curbside pickup. 
and walking around in masks uh, has become our new family's fashion statement. We moved to a new flat last month as my wife and I both transitioned to working from home for an extended period of time. Uh, and each new piece of furniture we've bought, uh, we bought online. So uh, we're actually now trying poorly, but we're trying to learn interior design online. Uh, and here's a picture of my wife taking Kelly Wurstler's master class on interior design. It's really amazing and ambitious. Um, and I'll also add, we tried shopping at a physical store to buy some dressers uh, and bureau for my daughter's new room. And there was a two and a half hour wait to get into the store. So no luck for us. Uh, so this period has all been about digital for my family. That's my personal vignette. Um, but we all know in retail how digital has come to the forefront in recent months. As we look ahead to holiday, Let's embrace the fact that this change can actually represent an opportunity to do things differently, or in some cases, even better. From our point of view, there is indeed an opportunity that's surfacing due to a slight shift in the customer journey. So let's discuss. So thinking about the customer journey, from discovery of your brand, to evaluation of your products, to decision-making of what works best for the customer, to the purchase of what's gonna work within their budget, we don't think that process has necessarily changed due to COVID. The timelines of each stage might have compressed or expanded a bit based on people's personal situations, but by and large, that progression hasn't changed. But what we would argue has changed meaningfully is the roles that the channels play, digital versus physical stores along that journey. There's kind of a flip-flop in a certain way that we wanna unpack. So let's start at the bottom of the funnel. Once the decision is made and the purchasing moments are unfolding, clearly e-commerce has been a tremendous accelerator of facilitating transactions over the last several months. We all know this. We saw a record expansion of e-commerce growth rates here at Pinterest for some of our partners in Q2. Not much has changed there though in terms of the digital experience, but there's clearly been an acceleration of usage. But on the flip side, the brick and mortar experience for many of our partners is going through meaningful transformation at the purchase moment, particularly when you think about the new layouts of physical space and store formatting. We now have six foot distance markers and checkout lines. We're seeing headcount limits, or in some cases, even setting up appointments to come in store to transact. And some stores are even drifting away from using physical space for transacting more towards using that space as a hub for shipping or curbside pickup for home delivery. All in all, there's just slightly more pressure on the physical space, less opportunity for the customer to meander, maybe even some felt time constraints, which has made a real change. So the question we're asking is, how much of this change is permanent? How much of this change will go back once things have receded and back, are back to normal? While we can't predict the future, we do think it's reasonable to assume that some of this new environment will at least influence this year's holiday shopping period. In fact, some experts are saying that the traditional Black Friday experience as we've known it for physical stores will be greatly diminished if not going away entirely this year. So with all that change, how do we best prepare to drive holiday sales? Our thinking is that the value unlock is at the start of the customer journey with discovery and evaluation. Traditionally, the physical store is where people have gone through the process of discovery and evaluation. In your favorite store, with time on your hands, using your senses of touch and sight to develop an opinion of what's gonna work best for you and your family. And conversely, digital has often been used to facilitate transactions once you already know what you wanna buy. Our thesis now, though, is that while digital's role in transacting has been and will continue to be vitally important, consumer behavior now is looking for more of that discovery process online, in part because it has to, right? How do we influence someone who's avoiding stores? How do we influence someone who will get to your store but only spend a fraction of the time that they used to inside? Can we bring the art and the science of physical merchandising experiences to the digital environment so consumers can have that emotional and engaging experience browsing around online that they're used to in a, in a store. So this transition we think takes time and effort, um, but we think that it's possible 
And we'd like to talk about that in part by using Pinterest. But first, we think it's worth mentioning um, how we got to this thesis and why we think we can help. We've developed this point of view from some of the data that we're seeing play out across Pinterest in aggregate for the last few months. We're sharing out publicly that we've hit record levels of engagement on the platform, growing activity by 60% over this time last year. And while many platforms are seeing great engagement recently, we think what's unique about Pinterest is A, our platform is one that over indexes to commercial intent. B, our content corpus is primarily driven by brands and creators. We're not really a user generated content platform. And C, active pinners are generally people, as Carrie mentioned, who demonstrated the behavior of planning ahead. So this translates to Pinterest seeing record levels of commercial engagement with people who are planning for their future purchases. That's really exciting. Our mission at Pinterest is to bring everyone the inspiration to create the life they love. And we're doing that now more than ever. With more than 350 million people coming to Pinterest every month, at record levels of engagement, we're seeing our pinners energetically look for ideas to browse and buy across all different kinds of needs in this unique environment. And here are some additional trending areas. Home office, deck furniture ideas, backyard kids activities, gardening tips, uh, and comfortable clothing, surprising no one. Um, but newest to the list, and what is a little bit surprising, is Christmas related activity. What we're seeing right now is a significant increase in holiday related searches already. As you can see here, we're already seeing for Christmas baking, for example, five times the amount of searches that we did last year. For Christmas decor, four times the amount. And Christmas party outfits, as you can see here, four times as well. Christmas is truly starting to pop early on Pinterest. And we're sharing this publicly as we think it's meaningful as an indicator of what's to come for consumer behavior this holiday season. But it's worth asking, why is this happening? Again, we can't predict the future, but as COVID constricts much of our everyday lives, there could be a sense in which people are looking forward to this holiday period as one that presents an opportunity to regain control of how we experience tradition, connection, and family. And people are clearly searching how to do that on Pinterest today. Perhaps the stakes feel a bit higher this year with all that we've gone through in 2020. And we just want our holiday period to be memorable in a good way. Uh, and we're seeing people be intentional about that, which takes time and planning ahead. We put a white paper out on this recently entitled Earlier Than Ever, Holiday 2020. And I encourage you all to download it and read it where we expand on that thesis a bit further. And we wanna back this up with a bit more data for you. So. In recent years, <clears throat> people have come to Pinterest historically to, to plan early for the holidays, months before those searches would typically show up on other search engines. And we charted that out here. In the line graph on the left, the dark blue line is depicting Pinterest's indexed holiday searches, and the light blue line is the same for the leading search engine. By comparison, as you can see here, we start spiking in June, July, whereas holiday searches on the leading competitive search engine don't really take off until December. But this year, that trend is accelerating more rapidly than we were expecting. In 2020, holiday searches on Pinterest started spiking in May. And in the graph on the right, we're quantifying a 77% year-over-year growth as far back as April on other key holiday search terms. So what does all this mean in terms of how Pinterest can help? So this year, we've invested heavily in bolstering our shopping experience to help our partners facilitate that browsing and discovery transition for their business. With all of this activity in the current environment, we're really excited to be pushing out these changes to Pinterest this year. So let's walk through them. Uh, first, we've developed a new program that maybe many of you have heard of called the Verified Merchant Program, whereby you can upload your entire product catalog to Pinterest and we can start developing some of these shopping experiences for you on our site. We made it easy for you to organize your products online so that your product groupings are in alignment with how your customers are shopping for these items when they're on Pinterest. We've also added benefits that allow you to more clearly understand your customers' behaviors while they're on Pinterest, such as the categories that they might index to with higher uh, degree of affinity. 
And the placement of the Pinterest tag, lastly, is the other key place there that we'd love for you to place on site as that unlocks the understanding of your conversion performance and opens up additional products and shopping surfaces to you. So once you're up and organized, now that you're able to fully be distributed across our shopping surfaces, uh, we've done a lot of work this year to make those experiences really pleasant for your customers. That's our area of expertise on the digital side. And our work has found that three things are important to be successful there. First, it needs to be visually appealing. Then it needs to be personalized. And thirdly, it needs to be action oriented to drive to a conversion. Um, here are two such examples that I want to walk through. First on the left, this is called shopping from close up. Um, you see this pin of someone with a bike and a cool backpack. With our machine learning, we now allow a pinner to highlight products within that image and then see real products in our content corpus that look visually similar. Um, and on the right, that's the shop from search experience, which uses either text search queries to, to return results back that are based on their personal style. Or you can actually click on the camera in the search bar and take a picture of something in real life. And then Pinterest will return images that are visually similar, similar and shoppable from verified merchants. So we think these are just two ways that your customers will enjoy shopping uh, in this digital environment that helps inspire while also forming purchase intents. And beyond this, you can now amplify your message by opting in to move into some of the paid promotion of your products, uh, which we're also making easier to do than ever before with things like automated bidding based on your budget, increased reporting capabilities, and a, an increasing number of ad units uh, to help your brand best come to life in the way that you'd like to be represented. Um, here are two that I'd like to go through uh, right now. Shopping ads on the left takes your catalog and gives you the ability to promote specific product groups to match even further with painter searches. And on the right is our collections experience. Um, this is an experience that allows you to create a grouping of visually related products that you think will make for a coherent and inviting shoppable experience. This is really new and we're really excited about it. So this is just the foundation, the Verified Merchant Program, where we want to ensure we all start. And from there, we can build for the right timing and theme. Here's what I mean. Uh, you always have your products on, as you can see in this chart here, available within your feed. And on top of that, you may decide to use one of our collections ad formats, like what we just went over. But then you can build out your full funnel program by asking what lifestyle content, perhaps, do you have on other channels that you can bring over to Pinterest and repurpose in a static format? And then, of course, the use of video is a great way to inspire and bring people closer to your brand. In a few moments, my colleague Courtney is going to share more ideas that will allow you to create beautiful holiday experiences across the funnel and bring your creative brand to life. So stay tuned for that. Additionally, from a marketer's perspective, for targeting and timing, here are a few of the top categories we're seeing pinners engage with historically around holiday, to which you can tie your message and branding. Gifting, food and drink, home decor, entertainment, and travel are core themes we have around holiday engagement. You can see the timing here as well so that you can know best when to start activating against these themes. But as I wrap up, I want to emphasize why we think it makes sense for you to invest your resources on Pinterest this holiday. Aside from what we've already chatted about previously on the fact that an outsized number of people are coming to our platform earlier than ever to engage with the commercial intent, we, it's our fundamental value proposition that Pinterest inspires people that we think sets us apart. We're grateful to be thought of as an inspiration engine because in retail, we believe that inspiration is one of the best ways to create that bond while shopping that results in net new transactions. Our survey data shows us that 83% of weekly active pinners have made a purchase based on the content they saw from a brand on Pinterest. And we're confident that inspiration matters for shoppers as two thirds of people in a recent survey said that the inspiration phase helps influence what they're gonna buy. No matter how much shopping is changing, what hasn't changed is the powerful and critical role inspiration plays in helping us decide what to buy. 
And in an age where we have more choice than ever before, the inspiration phase of the shopping journey is critical to help customers declutter their options, clarify, and build that confidence that they can indeed find the perfect product that they're looking for. Uh, and as a retailer, inspiration matters to you too. It not only moves shoppers to the point of decision-making, it allows them to be, again, confident in a way that we think translates to real value for your brand. We've discovered that shoppers focused on finding the perfect product for them or product they feel confident in, on average, end up spending 20% more than those who are just focused on the transactional purchase. This confidence, again, comes from the inspiration that translates to real value for your business. And so when you add all that up, you put this pinner behavior and the partner performance together overall, this is what you get. What we're showing here is a graph of new data of what happened from holiday on Pinterest last year. What you're seeing is that our baseline conversion rate, the blue line, increased three times over the norm over the holiday period, more so even than the amount of content that people were engaging with in Q4. That's the dark blue rectangles. And you also see that those messages from our partners, those impressions, the blue rectangles, they are a leading and correlating indicator of conversions. It means, ultimately, that the brands who focused on inspiration early were able to influence conversions in an outsized way. And lastly, these conversions from Pinterest are meaningful in part because they are so often incremental conversions. In other words, these transactions would not have happened if our partners hadn't been using Pinterest. And that data comes from Newstar, a third-party marketing and attribution company, who found in an aggregated study that Pinterest drove the highest percentage of incremental conversions compared to any other channel, 25%, beating search, display, and other social partners. So in summary, what is a partner to do and how can Pinterest help our partners prepare for this holiday season? Given the new environment we're facing that's calling for digital discovery, given the fact that holiday will look very different this year with certain anchor points potentially going away, and because Pinterest has demonstrated that we play a unique role in shopping inspiration that drives incremental holiday purchases, We'd love for you to leverage us as you look to make that transition. Let's work for you this holiday season so that you can inspire your customers as they look to shop online. And here now to talk in more specifics about how you can creatively bring this strategy to life is Courtney Banty, our Director of Creative Strategy here in the US. Take it away, Courtney. Thanks, Dave. Um, so hi, once again, my name is Courtney Banty and I'm part of the Pinterest Creative Strategy team. The creative strategy team at Pinterest exists to help brands of all shapes and sizes activate and create really amazing creative content for the platform. And today we're going to talk about just that through the lens of the awesome holiday opportunity that Dave and Carrie just spoke about. So with that, let's just get started. First off, we've talked a lot today about inspired decisions and how on Pinterest you can really effortlessly move from modes of inspiration to action. And oftentimes when you pivot or hit a touch point where you are moving from inspiration to action, what's moving you there is oftentimes a really great piece of creative. And part of the reason that is, is something actually very core to the Pinterest platform. On Pinterest, brands are welcome. And the reason for that is because more often than not, your ads are appearing in context. So again, ads on Pinterest appear as content. Which means the question becomes, how can your brand create, create uh, excuse me, how can your brand create content that inspires this holiday season? First off, it starts with aligning to moments. Obviously, the moment we're in as a whole is the Christmas and holiday season, but there's so many micro moments that happen within that season that your brand can tap into. That can be anything from all the different holiday celebrations you'll plan with friends and coworkers to thinking of new elf on the shelf ideas to wow your kids when they wake up in the morning. And it's important to not only think of those moments um, at the bottom of the funnel, but also at the top of the funnel, because again, we see that moments matter both in aided awareness as well as online sales lift. Next is thinking about mindsets. So again, the more you're able to tap into a pinner mindset, the more likely you are to create content that feels relevant and actually genuinely helpful to them. And leveraging our 2020 data, we actually isolated seven different pinner mindsets that are gonna be really helpful as you look to ideating creative throughout this holiday season. So let's take a look at the first one. 
The first one is the early bird. This is the person, quite frankly, who inspired this entire presentation. I assure you that they have completed all of their Christmas shopping before the majority of us have even made a list. I am not an early bird shopper myself. But when you're talking to this particular consumer, again, start talking about shopping and transactions now, or even maybe getting into thinking about different types of payment plan options that may exist. Next is the traditionalist. This is the person who probably spends the majority of September, or excuse me, the majority of December watching holiday movies, and in many ways trying to bring that to life in their, in their home. They're not probably gonna go for some more contemporary trends. They're really gonna stick with the red and green. So the best thing you can do as a brand is actually to help them manifest the traditions that they know and love, especially in these uncertain times. Next is the decorator. This person, they love the gifting, they love the parties, but more than anything, they love decoration. And we hear from so many pinners that this year more than ever, they're really gonna wanna go completely over the top. Again, I think we're gonna be spending a lot more time at home. So again, provide people with new and different creative ways to decorate their home. Dare I say, potentially wrapping the frames behind you with wrapping paper for your coworkers when you're on VC. Next is for the self-gifter. I'm definitely probably guilty of this. Oh, I don't think we should feel guilt for self-gifting. This year, and I think in many years, there's always generally one person in the family who actually like makes Christmas happen. Um, and that person, again, deserves to be um, rewarded to take a moment out and um, rest. And I think it's actually really gonna help contribute to just really healthy mental health throughout the continued holiday season. Next, the rookie online shopper. We again are continuing to see a surge in e-commerce. And again, you're seeing people who've never shopped online before shopping online. That will likely continue into Q4 and into December. They, while they are starting to online shop, they're still occasionally feeling a little bit apprehensive. So make sure when you're talking to this particular shopper, you're just being very clear about the different shipping options that exist, how it works, when it will arrive, and even all the way down to different return policies. Next is the next level party planner. This person is completely responsible for always putting on the most amazing celebrations, whether it's with coworkers, friends, or family. This year, again, they're gonna have a few more constraints to work within. So this person is not necessarily always talking about products, it's also talking about ideas, ideas on how you can, again, navigate the new constraints that might be um, in, in place in December. And last here is for the shipping first shopper. This person probably last year rarely even entered a brick and mortar store and we're already completely on the e-commerce bandwagon. This person is always going to be looking at the different shipping opportunities that exist between retailers. And often that shipping helps them deselect and select who they're going to go with. So again, be upfront and be very clear about the different shipping opportunities that exist and when it's gonna arrive at their doorstep. Now that we've talked about both moments and mindset, I wanna get into some insights. Insights are always one of the best ways to fuel your creative ideas. And as you look at some of the insights on this page here, what's interesting is not necessarily that baking or decor ideas are uh, spiking this year, because that's actually to be expected. What's interesting, again, is the theme of this presentation, that it's actually spiking earlier than ever. And the question becomes, why is that? Our theory is that again, next slide that this season is truly gonna be much more special than years past. Again, we keep saying this, but it's been a tough year, a lot of ups and downs. And again, when we look ahead to the future, we see Christmas as a point where again, we can celebrate and feel good. The next part is a general fear of the unknown. I'm actually personally the middle of five children. Oh, I'm actually the, the middle of five children. And um, my sisters and I, we actually already started planning um, and thinking through different holiday um, logistics all the way back in April. And again, I think that more than anything, planning is actually a manifestation of how we're coping. And I think the pinners are really using planning as a way to cope, which means more than anything, your brand has an actual opportunity to inspire the unknown, to provide ideas and solutions that helps them again, navigate all of these uncertain times. So on the next slide, you'll start to see that we took a series of our insights and we asked ourselves, how can we use that insight to inspire a creative idea that is actually a solution or an idea for our current circumstances. In this case, we took Christmas baking and asked ourselves, how could a financial services brand actually activate against Christmas baking? In this case, it says budget-friendly gifts from the heart. Again, there's a lot of economic uncertainty going on for people, and Christmas baking can actually be a really nice way to offer a gift that still feels really personal. And the next is cozy Christmas. 
I find this search term actually particularly interesting. And I think that cozy is actually much more evidence of the fact that we're likely gonna be traveling less this holiday season and potentially staying home. So how can we make staying home not necessarily a bad thing, but actually something we can, again, kind of nest into that winter mindset. And in this case, we thought of a different cozy Christmas jammy ideas. So again, the whole family can match, you can have different cozy things, but again, leaning back into the, the comfy clothes. And next here is Christmas party outfits. While we're definitely gonna wanna stay cozy at home, we still want to make sure we're dressing up this year because dressing up feels fun. And in this case, we again thought through the lens of different potential celebration parameters we'll have to work around. In this case, virtual party looks we love. You can imagine that now more than ever, we're really gonna have to make sure that whatever we're wearing on the top in VCs is gonna be really the pizzazz that shows this season. And then last year, we just wanted to touch on one more piece. Again, we've talked about a lot of different lower funnel examples and creative in this particular instance. But again, because in some ways the inspiration and discovery mode that often happens in brick and mortar won't necessarily be the same as previous years, it's important to think about how you inspire the upper funnel. In this case, we have a series of pin extensions. Pin extensions are a really great way to create a unit that is both interactive um, and inspiring to pinners. In this case, you have the opportunity to go and navigate an entire room and see products within context that link directly out to particular e-commerce sites. To summarize everything we've discussed today, this is how you need to think about how you inspire holiday decisions when you're making creative. First off, align to moments. That's both the macro moment of Christmas as well as all the micro moments that exist in between. Next, always fuel your creative with insights and really stretch those insights Try to make um, unexpected creative ideas come from them. And last, again, inspire the unknown. Planning is really a manifestation of coping. And I think that brands have a really important role in helping pinners navigate that. If you need a few more creative examples and some inspiration, um, you'll see a pin code here. And if you open your Pinterest app and open the Pinterest camera, you can scan that and it'll take you to the creative strategy at Pinterest board, where you'll find tons more examples of awesome holiday creative. And with that, I'm actually gonna pass it back to Carrie, who's gonna facilitate our Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney and Dave. Super insightful. Um, before we head into Q&A, I also just want to put in a quick plug that we do have another upcoming webinar as well scheduled, um, geared especially for our agency partners. So if that's you, pay attention. Um, and you guys will be able to apply our Pinterest performance solutions to your upcoming holiday campaigns. Um, so you can sign up at the URL here. And um, now we kind of want to just go to the audience and welcome any questions from you guys. So please submit those um, and our team will read out the most popular ones. Cool. So I see one here um, and I think I could take a first stab at answering it and then Dave and, and Courtney certainly chime in. But a common one is, is Pinterest a good place to run Black Friday or Cyber Monday ads? So in short, yes, spoiler alert, we are we are an excellent place for those ads. Um, but to answer this one well and thoroughly, I, I think we do need to take a step back and have a broader POV on um, what Black Friday and Cyber Monday will look like this year. And, and clearly Courtney and Dave spoke to that a lot in their content. Um, but just to kind of put a finer point on it, I think we might see probably three or four changes. Um, no, no crowds, first and foremost, at risk of stating the obvious. Um, In-person queuing around the block uh, certainly will look different this year. I think crowds are the absolute last thing that stores want to encourage during a pandemic um, or that people want to experience. Um, and so when you think about that, it is obviously you know, follows that online sales will skyrocket. Um, and those already accounted for a, a huge chunk of last year's Black Friday sales, I think about 40%. Um, so we only expect that to increase as COVID has just made people more comfortable um, buying from home. And, and Courtney touched on that with, you know, catering to the rookie online buyer as well, and just being really clear in your messaging on, on how to make the sale easy. Um, the other kind of two factors are, in addition to online sales, I think there will be a different mechanism for pickup. So curbside pickup could skyrocket. Um, that's what our top retailers are telling us they're going to emphasize in, in their messaging. Um, and I also think that we will be pushing people to remember how easy shipping can be and how easy uh, return options can be. And then I think the final element is that there will be less of a focus on a single day. Um, retailers are really telling us they're spacing out their deals earlier than usual. 
Um, so perhaps less of a focus on actual Black Friday. Uh, Macy's, for example, has been very public about um, saying that they could start deals as early as right after Halloween. Um, last year, we saw probably about 20% of holiday sales happen on those few days between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So we could see that 20% really decrease and see that spread out more across, across the season. Um, so for us, again, just to kind of reemphasize what Dave and Courtney have said, um, while pinners are planners, we also see a huge volume of last minute conversions. Uh, so don't make the mistake of thinking that those two things are mutually exclusive, that you know planners don't convert. Pinners are super deal oriented um, and they convert en masse. So when we send out these slides, take a look at, at the slide Dave showed with um, the bar chart of conversions that just show that even last year, conversions were you know, 3X the, the average conversion rate we see on the platform every week in Q4. And just given how much our usage and conversion has ticked up in COVID, we think we're even gonna see amplification beyond that um, in this upcoming Q4. So build with awareness tactics early um, in Q4, even starting in Q3, and then start shifting to conversion tactics um, as Q4 progresses to really harness those conversions. So that's that's my advice, Dave, Courtney, I don't know anything to add to that. I think you nailed it. I think, um, you know, I just wanna even emphasize further that Black Friday, Cyber Monday is there um, and to best leverage that for Pinterest as those conversions are, are already happening as we saw last year is to get ahead of that through the planning like you just mentioned, Carrie. I think to best take advantage of that wave is to use the fact that people are starting earlier on um, and sort of seed yourself in on the front end such that you're part of the, the add to cart and the transaction cycle that's gonna happen on, on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And I just add to, to end that just one final note on creative messaging. I think the closer you get to Christmas, you kind of see the pinner mindset, regardless of the ones we talked about, get a little bit, you know, shift a little bit more to, to urgency. And we've seen some retailers have great success, even with some simple communication that says top toys for teens. And when you see that in December and you're three weeks out and you haven't done your gifts yet, if I click on that and there's a gift on the other end that checks something off my lips, pinners are all over that. Absolutely. Yeah. Good point. I mean, it's, at risk of being really literal, like literal works. Like people are coming yeah. for utility and ideas on Pinterest. And absolutely, we've seen pins like that um, perform phenomenally well in past years. Exactly. And if you have a sale, tell people you have a sale and you have a deal. Bingo. Cool. Okay, we'll probably do two or three more questions. Let's see. Um, okay, I'm seeing a good one come in several times about double clicking a little more on how do we best measure these earlier touches on Pinterest? knowing that it might not be um, the last click prior to purchase that gets all the credit. So this is one of our favorite topics at Pinterest. I'll also kind of give some thoughts and then turn it over to you guys. Um, so I think the obvious place to start is start with the pinner when you think about how to measure activity. Um, your audience can actually teach you a lot. And we have over 350 million, 367 million to be exact, um, monthly active users across the globe representing every demographic, nationality, age, walk of life, kind of you name it. So um, obviously with such kind of an expansive base, they behave really differently from each other and they behave differently on Pinterest than yeah. other platforms. Um, and again, at risk of, of repeating what you've heard from us before, they really come with intent before they know what they want. They're just coming with curiosity and kind of an open mind. Um, so I think you know, to these guys, seeing is believing. And when a pinner makes an inspired purchase, it means more. And it leads to not only just that initial purchase, but brand advocacy and retention. Um, so I would say our advice is really measure the entire journey and think about incrementality. Dave, Dave touched on this in his slides. We often partner with Newstar, which is kind of a best in class third party measurement platform that can help you think about how to weight all of the touch points leading up to a conversion. Um, and we think, and, and know that we show up really well when that type of really nuanced measurement um, is in place. And I will, you know, I have a lot of empathy for all the brands listening because it's tempting to measure last click. It's easy. Um, but just because it's easy doesn't mean it's always accurate um, or always true to the journey of those unique pinners that, that you guys are capturing. Uh, Dave, anything, yeah. anything to add from your vantage point? Yeah, I think I, I, I love that. I think the other way I think about it is, you know, how long is your customer's journey? Like, 
you know, have you been able to quantify that or define that? How many days does it take? How long does it take for someone to first be introduced to your brand all the way to that conversion touch point? And to set up and make sure that you have the markers in place to understand where the customer is on that journey and what's potentially influencing them the most. Um, again, it's potentially in some ways a little harder to do just from like measuring the last click to the transaction, but there are ways to evaluate, particularly with Pinterest, what is the time of exposure to actual conversion and understanding through the course of that life cycle, what behaviors your customers are going through. And so um, if you can understand, I think in more holistic sense, how long the customer journey is, I think that feels better about um, measuring um, outside of just last click. And then the other things I'll just, I'll quickly mention what you touched on, Carrie, is let's evaluate potentially some other metrics like lifetime value or what's the quality of the customer that you're getting on one channel versus another. Or again, incrementality, right? Are we driving net new customers, net new transactions? I think there are ways to sort of amplify your understanding of performance that um, is really helpful. And I think in some ways matches up in a more truer sense with real life and how your customers are shopping and experiencing as opposed to just the last click. Yep, super helpful. I think. I think you nailed that. I think there's a lot of nuance and I would just encourage everyone listening, reach out to your account teams, reach out to Pinterest folks to help you think through it. Um, Cause it's, this is a meaty question. It's a good one. Um, excellent. So a few more coming in, in our last three minutes. Um, Courtney, I think this might be a great one for you to kick off. And this is one we get a lot. What do I do if my creative won't be ready until later this year? And we, we do hear this one just because um, you know, oftentimes people plan their tentpole, massive TV campaigns and all their other touch points for later in the quarter. Um, so Courtney, look, take it take it away and let us know what to do if that's the boat that these guys are in who are listening. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, that's definitely a question we get a lot. And um, I would actually just encourage you to take a look at your assets as a whole. And we always like to say like repurpose with purpose. And I think sometimes we have people who come to us with a particular image and they're just like, there's no way we could possibly use this for Christmas or there's no way we can do this. And I think that again, there's a lot of room in your assets to adjust it to seasons and stuff with a very, a few different aspects that have to do with design. And one of the best ways to learn a little bit more about design and creative best practices as it pertains to the platform is actually heading over to Pinterest Academy. Um, it's a website that you can take go through and it'll show you the very nitty gritty best practices. And suddenly you can see how you can take a particular image and then transform it to um, a really great piece of holiday creative. Awesome, super helpful. Yep, we have a ton of creative resources at Pinterest. So look at Pinterest Academy, again, reach out and, and we'll help you guys through that. Yeah, um, it's so, like a creative strategy at Pinterest for. There's plenty of examples there. Yes, good point, good reminder. Excellent. So I know we're running out of time. There's other questions about safety and some other content. So be on the lookout for more white papers from us coming. I think um, we have a lot more to talk about there, but we're at time. So if you do remember one thing from today, please think of Pinterest as really the home um, and the best source for all things inspirational, uplifting, and shopping related uh, this holiday season. We wanna help you navigate the uncertainty of the rest of the year, and we'll continue sharing insights and signals regularly over the coming months. So please remember to take the quick survey so that you get the PDF slides. And this will also be posted um, to our YouTube channel. So be on the lookout there. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. And we hope that you enjoyed the content and let me be the very first to wish you a happy holidays. See you soon. Bye.